The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Thursday, the 8th day of June, 2023. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, and Lindos. I'm Jamel Hartman. He's Larry Marshall Jr. And Tamara McHale will be with us in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. Happy Thursday, good brother. Good day. How are you? Well, I'm here, man. I'm here. I'm here. I can't say too much. You know, life is life and um, life is lifing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about uh, your your cigars. You know they might be on hold because your South Beach teams in the finals uh, are down. So you know I think you might have brought your cigars out a bit prematurely, but we'll see. In sports, nothing's over till it's over, right? Well, you know something happened earlier this year that told me that this would happen when the um, two Florida teams made it to the final four of the NCAA tournament, I was just like, you know what? Bridesmaids, it's the year of the bridesmaids in South Florida. And I accepted that. So, you know, Denver in basketball is just the best team on the planet. And so beating them in one game is, you know, worth a cigar. And then Florida Panthers, they shouldn't even be there. They've looked like an eighth seed lately. Okay. So what, what about what about Manchester? Oh, right. Sorry. Manchester who? Oh, yeah, I thought you, didn't, you weren't bridesmaids with the current Manchester derby in the I FA Cup final. about Manchester United until uh, we have the right ownership. I do not um, spend my time as a fanboy. So, oh, sorry, I forgot. I forgot. My, my apologies, audience. Yes, yes. Some, some people, you know, just like to. We're not going to talk about go over to Italy and talk about his team, but we'll leave it at that. We'll leave that. We'll leave that well enough alone, folks. Yeah. Anyway, greetings, everyone. Thanks for making us part of the daily routine. A good one today as we welcome Dr. Jewel Lendy on. We're discussing dental health. And um, honestly, you know, this is one of my favorite conversations. And I don't want to offend anyone or be disrespectful in what I'm about to say. I don't know if, I don't know if Larry does it. I, I just don't know. But folks, I think it's nasty when we have insurance and we don't use it to go to the dentist for our checkups. I'm just saying, I think it's nasty, right? Um, I love this show for a number of reasons. I think we think that dental health is simply, and good oral health is simply brushing your teeth. You got, I mean, the majority of people probably don't floss, right? Um, I remember we had Kishé Robinson on. It's like, you have a floss and you take that out and you smell it. What does it smell yeah. like? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes. Trust me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, seriously. You can have the best looking smile and your oral health could be very poor. So really looking forward to speaking with Dr. Jewel Lendy. Uh, to me, it's a conversation that we should be having regularly. It's a part of your health. And as um, Dr. DeRosa said when she was speaking about, you know, aging and, and brain health, how oral health actually impacts the brain. So just keep that in mind. The Daily Play is a name that plays today. So um, should be interesting to see um, if Larry gets this or if the audience can help him get it. Um, folks, please don't forget to subscribe on our website, uh, thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. That said, let's get into today's discussion. And um what 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 was what, what Charles? T Although Larry, eighty percent of the teams that win game three win the championship. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, we'll 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 
Denver is likely. I, I don't think anyone expect. I think if you bet on Miami to win, you are either going to make a lot of money or smart. You're going to lose a lot. Yeah. Smart enough to not to bet a lot to lose. So, um, yeah. And Angelina Butler says, a year for dental month, healthy mouth, healthy body. Yes. I, I, and thank you, Angelina, for the work that you do. She's in that space as well. Uh, good morning to you, Karen Simmons. Today, she says, Larry and Jamel, she is watching on our website. So she is commenting on our website. And folks, if you're just tuning in and you'd like to know, because we did get some people who still um, didn't use the show chat on the website, they use the website chat. So I'm just going to share the video again, just so if you want to watch on our website, if you go on our website, you have an idea of how to join um, the chat and engage with us. After this, we'll get into today's discussion, which I'm pretty sure you all have opinions of. You could check our Instagram story to see what the topic is. So we want to help you to learn how to chat while watching the daily hour on the website. So first you want to go to the daily hour.com and then you scroll down until you see live and where you see live, that's where you'll see, uh, the live episode of the show. You want to hit play and uh, make sure you're tuned in. Then you'll see the join the chat button. You click that. And once you hit the join the chat button, all you do is put your name in. My name is, well, Jamal, first name. And then my last name is Hartman. And so just hit join the chat. And now you can literally chat. Now, if you wanted to change your name, all you do is hit edit name right there. But otherwise, it's that easy. That's how you can watch and engage live on the dailyhour.com. All right, folks, there you have it. Yeah, you can do YouTube tutorials. I like the way how you slid it on and, you know, that's, that's another stream of income for you, Jamal. Th thank you. I appreciate that. Um, if you go and watch Hitch, um, when Hitch first came on, you watch the videos, I was the voice that done the tutorials for how to register for Hitch for cab drivers. So... Um, thank you for that. Maybe I should take that up. Um, so look, um, good morning to you, Marcia, uh, Robin Patrice Bradshaw. So yesterday, um, there was something in the Royal Gazette, and uh, I, I want to tie it to um, Sir John Swan when he was on. So title is Laws, Laws Being Drafted to Enshrine National Heroes Day Criteria. Um, according to the Royal Gazette, legislation that would enshrine the National Heroes Day criteria and selection process into law is underway, Senators heard. Owen Darrell, the Minister of Youth, Culture and Sports, said during the morning uh, Senate sitting, quote, this process is underway with the Department of Culture concluding jurisdictional review, end quote. Mr. Darrell, who is also the government leader in the Senate, gave a brief statement on this year's event, as well as, made, uh, as, well as progress made uh, last year to improve it going forward. Obviously, we all know June is the month we honor um, national heroes. And last year, if I'm not mistaken, the government um, changed the process to every 10 years rather than on an annual basis, which I think makes sense because just not everyone. Now, what was interesting, that's not today's question, but someone actually said um, that one of the criteria should be that they have to be Bermudians. And people are like, aren't they? And then someone says, well, go and look, which I found very, very interesting. Very interesting. So question of the morning, and it was on our Instagram page, is what should the criteria be for recognition of a national hero? Now, folks, if you don't know, there is already a set criteria. There is a set criteria. But we're asking. Now, I've discussed this on the show before. My biggest issue is that almost everyone who's been recognized was involved in politics in some way. And that's one of my biggest concerns. It's like, is politics is not a criteria. And I, I just feel like in such a, such a small town, small community, as much as Bermudians don't seem to like politics and politicians, we certainly love to honor them. We love to honor them. When there are so many other people that have made a difference in the lives of Bermudians and um, you know, created a way for people to progress and prosper. So mm -hmm. what do you believe? What are your thoughts? What should the criteria be for recognition as a national hero? It says of, so we'll change that. As a national hero. What are your thoughts? Well, I would just piggyback off of what you said. Um, I, I definitely agree that it's too much political 
involvement. Um, I think you, your comment that you just made a uh, mention of was why do us Bermudians like to do it? Well, it actually comes from the Ministry of Culture and Sport. So the ministers, it's, so it's already attached to government. So I'm not surprised that it's a heavy political involvement. Mm -hmm. I think what I would like to see is something that you just mentioned is um, probably more attachment to community leaders, um, teachers, nurses, you know, people that have made an impact on our community that um, that we can, you know, talk about, whether it's um, clergy members or, 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 or things that are more connected to the everyday person. I think people, myself included, tend to check out when you just know that it's about, you know, political figures. And now, if a certain political, whichever government's in place or in power, we tend to see more of their former government members ra rather than the other. So it just seems like, okay, you like want to just highlight your people, fine. Mm -hmm. Now, I did note last year, um, it was a bit of both, which was a bit different, but again, still too too heavily favor for the, the former politicians. I just think that Bermuda has so much more to offer as far as celebrating people over the years, both past and present. Yeah. No, I, I completely understand you. Um, and for those that are, I, I completely agree. I think there are people in media who've made a way, people in sport, right? Um, there, there are so many people. I mean, Gina, is her name Gina Swenson? First, you know, some people may say, oh, well, she was only Miss Bermuda. But just being, uh, I'm not saying Miss Bermuda, Miss Universe, but being that, what opportunities did she create for other Bermudians? Um, yes. Clyde Bess, right? Um, you know, what paths did he, doors did he open? from a sports perspective. So there's entertainment and, and sport, right? Um, yeah. And then there, there's activism. There's activism. Not every activist was a politician, you know? Um, so let's go through, just share what you, with you what the criteria is already. So criteria for the selection of Bermuda's national hero, this is according to culture.bm, the individual group to be designated as a national hero should meet most of the following criteria. So most of them. Um, has made a significant and lasting contribution to Bermuda has enriched the lives of others, has a legacy that will stand the test of time and have continued relevance in the future, has contributed to the quality of life and destiny of Bermuda, be considered as outstanding in their area of service, has ready name recognition among the general population, is recognized by his slash her profession or organization, is reflective of Bermuda's cultural heritage and diversity. It also says, it is important that the individual or group designated as a national hero of, un, un, of outstanding character and may possess some or all of the following characteristics, dedicated, ethical, ethical, committed, self-sacrificing, conscious, or conscientious, sorry, agent or, of change or betterment, risk taker, demonstrates consistency and passion, demonstrates love of Bermuda and her people, demonstrates leadership quality. So that's what we have on culture.bm. What are your thoughts, audience? I mean, when you think of our national heroes, uh, Sir John Swan, um, we've got Sir E.T. Richards, if I'm not mistaken, Dame Lewis Brown and Evans was the first, um, Roosevelt Brown or uh, Dr. Kamara Fago, he's there, uh, Gladys Morrow, she's there, Mary Prince yeah. there, who's that? Um, Sir Henry James. Yeah, Jack Parker, um, and you said Richards. Yeah, E.T. Richards, and then yeah. E.F. Gordon. So off the yeah. top, of head, that's all then. E yes. Okay, so those are your national heroes, and I can tell you what every one of them's contribution was if you want to test me, but we don't have time for that. The point is, those are your national heroes. What do you believe the criteria should be to receive recognition as a national hero? Let's talk about that. Um, Michelle White says. Criteria should be community impact, which should include charity. I don't, I disagree. I disagree. And I'll tell you why I disagree. I think chari you all know how I feel about charity. I think charity is the, uh, how can I put it? I, I think there's a difference between charity and community. That's my point. I think um, charity doesn't benefit people, in my opinion. Community does. And I can give examples as I've done before. Charity is having a backpack giveaway every year and giving the same people backpacks. Community is 
giving people a backpack today and ensuring they don't need one next year this time. So I kind of, whenever I see that word charity, it throws me off. Charity is a way of that big businesses and companies, they will lay off workers today. And then tomorrow they'll say they did donated $10,000 to someone so that they can get public back on their site. We see it all the time. So no, I don't go for charity. I think community activism is the way to go. That's my personal feeling, but you feel how you feel, Michelle. Sam Cat Place says, uh, states should be Bermudian. Impact on some aspect of community, not a current government figure. Well, should we go to the Instagram replies, Larry? Yeah, sure, let's go there. Okay, let's go to the Instagram replies. We asked the same question of what the criteria should be on Instagram. Uh, let's see what people are out on the eye saying. So, what should the criteria be for rec recognition as a national hero, we asked, and uh, someone said, transcend their time period, left a lasting legacy that continues to inspire and influence the future. I like that transcend the time period because that ensures that it's going from generation to generation. Yep, Indeed. I agree. It's not just something they done that day that lasted then. Another person says, widely recognized and respected by the general population. I'm not quite sure I agree with this because this sounds like popularity. Yeah. And that almost seems like where where we are at with Bermuda corn right. politics. Like yeah. where, you know, I think we need to get away from uh widely accepted because if you could be a yeah. nice person, but at the end of the day, are you truly being impactful? Yeah, are you a fact I, I keep saying I, I choose effective over popularity any day of the week. Um, okay. I, I, I remember my former lawyer, our former lawyer saying, you know, the greatest problem with Bermudians is that we celebrate the wrong people and wrong things. Like we legit, like think about what we so celebrate right now and the kind of people and things we celebrate. People who have really done nothing for you or the community. They're not effective, nothing, right? But we'll celebrate them. Mark Bean said it. The media, and, and this, these are his, his words. The media and people make you think I'm the bad guy. I'm here telling you I love you. I'm putting my health on the line for you. But yet you think I'm the bad person. Remember, I think it was Malcolm X said, you know, the media can play as a major role in who you like and dislike. Right? So I don't know if I agree with that one. Widely recognized and respected by general population. I don't think it should be about popularity. I think it should be about how effective you are for the benefit of the community. Another okay. one dedication to promoting Bermuda. Hmm. Sounds like tourism. That, that could be a factor. I would say it, for me, I wouldn't say, okay, yeah, well, they help promote Bermuda. That's a check. But if you're uh, based overseas, an actress or, you know what I mean? In that space, I could see how one could get to that. Yeah. Okay. And then someone says, Hard work and community activism. That, that's the one right there that I say, okay, cool. Activism, community activism. Any, all day, any day, every day of the week. I'm down for community activism. What are your thoughts, audience? What should the criteria be to uh, receive recognition as a national hero? What should the criteria be to receive recognition as a national hero? Um, Charles H. Jefferson II says, I think there should be categories of people selected. As you all have mentioned, nominations should be attached to each of them to ensure that we don't have just politicians. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I look at Jamaica. They, they only have, I mean, they've had their National Heroes thing for years and probably have very few, like 10 or something. I don't think there needs to be categories. This is not, this should be something that is, just doesn't go to every and anybody. Yeah, yeah. I, like the, I like the nominations part, though. I think we as the people probably should have a say in who our National Heroes are. So, I'm okay with one part. I, I don't want it to be get to in five years, we're going to have 50 national heroes. Right. You know right. what I mean? I think it can get oversaturated. I don't think that's what we're looking for, but I like the involvement of the people because we are the ones that's actually going to be celebrating. Indeed. And I th that's my point there. But as far as the nominations should be attached to each of them to ensure that we don't just have politicians. Um, I think we, the people do have an opportunity. We're the ones that uh, fill out the applications and nominate people uh, when, it, when they were available. So, you know, I, I, I get you, Charles. I, I just don't think, you know, we don't want, it, it should be a, a select few. It's not just, oh, everyone gets it because they made this contribution. No, it, it should be people who stand out. It should be people who have made a, a generational difference 
that we're all benefiting from today. Audience, what are your thoughts? What should be the criteria? Um, what, what, what to be uh, recognized as a national hero? Like, what do you think it should be? There are yeah. a lot of Bermudians who have made significant contributions over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we also have to read or put out there that um, to some people, this holiday isn't, they're, they're just not behind it. And, um, you know, it, it was something that kind of took the place of the Queen's birthday and they just feel like they're, they're, they're not invested. I think as time goes by, it may have a shift, but I think that's why we kind of get this. Well, what is this? Okay, uh, all right, that's our national hero. Okay, you know, I got the day off, and and until that changes, I think that's when we'll see a significant demand of change from the people. But mm -hmm. right now, it just doesn't seem like it's there. I think it comes down to education too. I think um, I I'll be honest. Before I was doing research work for Bermuda Tri Trivia, I did not know who Gladys Morrow was, for instance. And so if I guarantee if you ask the majority of the audience, if they knew everything about each national hero, they wouldn't know. And that's not a bad thing. Um, we weren't taught. We weren't told. You know, um, it's, I think the national heroes thing is a good thing because it gives people the opportunity to learn about people who have made a huge difference in their lives and um, some of the work that they did were benefiting from today. So I yep. definitely um, appreciate it being there, but I think there needs to be greater connection and no disrespect to Carnival lovers, but now having Carnival take place that weekend takes the attention away from it even more. Now, yeah. I haven't participated in Carnival to know if they tie anything to national heroes, but I think it would be a great thing if they did. Yeah, and and to your point about the, the, the education portion, mm -hmm. I think what we've been saying consistently this morning, as soon as you throw a political figure in there, people turn off because they just at, during a holiday period you just want to just detach from things politics yeah indeed let's go through one more comment before we bring tamara McHale in for the news break don't forget we have dr jewel landy again folks you all i was back look i love talking about teeth and oral health even though i don't like going to the dentist i do go i honestly I no disrespect to nobody but i find it strange strange it's just a different smell in the oil. Like, I don't know what it is. Like it just, uh, but I go twice a year. I'm glad you said it. Cause folks, if you don't floss and you don't go to the dentist, you probably got some issues you don't know about. Yeah. I'm just saying, but she, I'm not the doctor. I'm not the she will talk to you more about that. Um, just don't come close to me. Look, I have breathing space. I don't like people in my space anyway. You know what I did appreciate? Seriously, I'm not joking. I appreciated COVID for the fact that everybody wearing masks because at that point, everybody had to smell what they were making us smell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they they should have like dropped some breath mints in there after the mask came back off. They knew, oh, that's what that's why that person keeps stepping back when I'm talking. Okay, let me take care of this. So everybody should have better health now. But anyway, Ebony Sousa says, um, inclusive of many of these great suggestions, I think mentorship is important, guiding the next generation of Bermudian leaders. I agree. I, I oh, yeah. that that's where I was saying um maybe uh Gina Swanson or Clyde Bass's, you know, if they did, you know, made an impact, came back, mentored, and helped people along the way, I think um, it, it th that's what people are looking for. Angeline Butler says, "Yep, don't sleep when your high uh, hygienist visits." And um, what, what's Sh Sh Sherry Vanderpool says, "I don't like going either." Jamal asks Angeline, "But I was there every six months." Yeah, Sherry's so rude. Lucky somebody didn't knock us here. But anyway, um, let's bring Tamara McKinley in for the uh, Daily Hour news break, and after that, we've got. Dr. Jewel Lendy, we're coming on a very important conversation about oral health. Good morning, everyone. Greetings, Tamara. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning. Hey, real quickly. So we we I know Jamaica has national heroes, right? Don't you have like national heroes? Yeah, we do. Oh, like Bob Marley, is he one? <laughs> no, actually, we have seven. We have seven national heroes. Bob Marley's name has come up a million times oh. because they have been saying that he needs to be added to the list of heroes. At one point, some people even said Usain Bolt, but no, we. Those seven people have been around, I think, from perhaps my mother's days. 
See, and that's so are they that was making. So are they political figures too? Actually, a few of them are political figures. Mm. Uh, Marcus Garvey, he was also popular in the United States. He was our first national hero in terms mm. of the you know the civil rights movement. And mm. about two of them are former prime ministers yeah. and also persons who help in terms of slavery and freedom mm. or independence. Mm. Yeah, mm. so there those people have been around at all. Actually, from even before my mom, or maybe the year when my mother was born, and that's mm. probably like fifty years ago. Okay. okay, that's interesting, and and so it seems like it, it it's so tied to politically around the region. Um, my hope is that we can see people because if you ask most people about Jamaica, they could probably name Bob Marley before any of your former prime ministers, right? So, um, you know, what did they do for the country? I think he's been a as you say in bolt hairs, they've been great servants, but obviously I have no say in that. What you got in the news for us today? All right, welcome everybody. This is the Daily Hour News Break for today, Thursday, June 8th, brought to you by the People's Pharmacy. So we start off with some unfortunate news that yesterday morning, a 28-year-old man was taken to hospital after a collision between two cars. The accident reportedly happened on South Road near the junction with Harvey Road in Paget. And according to a police spokesman, they said that details surrounding the circumstances are being investigated with information suggesting that the vehicles were traveling in opposite directions when the collision occurred. The 28-year-old man was transported to hospital for treatment of his injuries. And anyone with any information who may have witnessed this collision, they're being asked to contact PC Edwin Dale on 211 or edil at bps.bm. Mm, very sad. Another accident. And hopefully yep. everyone is good. Um, yeah, let's let's take our time. Let's pay attention. When I was driving to work um, yesterday, and I, I used my um, dash cam again because I just hadn't had it on for a while. So I've been using it again for the last two weeks. But what my dash cam doesn't pick up, every time I go past someone, I do something. I just slightly... If they're driving slow or they like they just seem like they're not driving at the normal speed on the highway, I always just look to the left or right to look in the car. And what do you think they're doing? On their phone. Correct. And it's like I can't then take my phone off my dash and record them, right? To show people. But it folks, we talk about driving on the influence often. But please, 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 please wait till you get to a stop sign. It stop lights, put your phones down. If not for you, at least for others on the roads. Yeah, and, and it's a hard thing. You know, I've been working on, um, I haven't overtaken no one on my bike in about three weeks. I'm, you know, I'm working on it. Um, but, and, and the next thing I was like, I don't, I'm not a big phone user like that, but that is something that I said, you know what, we need to tighten up on that also. Because it starts with each one of us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so true. All right. So in some other news, as you both have been discussing the whole, the whole issue regarding uh, national heroes, uh, so legislation that will enshrine the National Heroes Day criteria and selection process, as Jamil had mentioned, into law, that's underway. Senators heard yesterday. So according to Minister of Youth, Culture and Sport, Owen Darrell, he said that the process is um, going, undergoing, and the Department of Culture will conclude the jurisdictional review. Additionally, remember that about this year's concert that's going to be held on June 25th. It is open to the public, but they know that space is limited, so registration is available online at culture.bm or www.culture.bm. But um, here's a quick clip of the minister pointing out the significance of National Heroes Day on Monday, June 14. Madam President, although thanks to our educational campaign, you will undoubtedly be reminded throughout the month of June of their many accomplishments. It is my hope that these celebrations, including the holiday on Monday, June 19th, will provide an opportunity to reflect upon their contributions to our society. Madam President, although there are only eight who have achieved the designation of national hero, the overarching message in connection with these celebrations is how each of us has a role to play 
in the work of uplifting our Bermudian community. See, again, it, it comes from a political figure, so it just seems like it's going to be more political. It's just politically driven. Well, I'm going to say something, and it's probably going to offend a lot of people, but it's no different from the airport being named after the late L.F. Wade. Um, you know, I think he did a lot to move Bermuda forward. I think, you know, the change in government in 98 was a result of a lot of the work that he did. He was, yeah. you know, if you go back and watch videos, read clips, he was an intelligent person. Um, not sure he'd be too happy about what the government is today. I'm not sure if that was his intentions for the party. But Sir John said something, you know, I mean, we've named buildings and, and, and or, you know, based on our political feelings and emotions, um, are they really all based on the contributions of, of what people have uh, made in Bermuda? And that's not to say I don't, I don't agree with it, but I think we need to ask ourselves the same questions when it comes to naming national heroes. Yeah. True. All right, and Jamel, you had mentioned about the pothole uh, email recently. Well, the Minister of Public Works, Lieutenant Colonel David Birch, he says that the government is fully aware of the impact that the recent heavy rains has had on the roadways mm -hmm. and the ministry is actively addressing this issue regarding the emergence of numerous potholes. So they know that the ministry is actively addressing the issue and the teams are dedicating, uh, working diligently to repair and restore the affected areas. Now, what Sherry called me yesterday? Um, or cookie crumbs or something like that. But yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll fix the potholes. What yeah. else? Yeah. yeah, sorry. All right, so quickly to some other uh, regional stories. So Jamaica's Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, yesterday departed for the Bahamas, where he is participating in the United States Caribbean Leaders Meeting. The two-day event will see CARICOM leaders and other delegates meeting with the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. Mm. They like her down in Jamaica? <laughs> We're kind of indifferent. I think initially when she came on the scene and the fact that her father is Jamaican, mm -hmm. we were rooting for her. But then because she kind of spoke bad about her dad. I, oh, I, and I, I guess I, they I, had. Their... Oh, I watched that episode yeah. of Practice Club when she's, you know, her eyes. Oh, I saw it. That's why I asked. Yeah, it was like, hmm. Yeah. So I think we are. I mean, we're still proud she has Jamaican roots, but they have always said she seems to lean more towards her Indian roots as opposed to Jamaican. So I think people are indifferent. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the only thing she knew and appreciated of Jamaica culture was apparently the weed based on her own comments, not me. That's, that's kind of what she said. But what else you got for us? All right. And finally, in the news regional stories, getting to Grenada will be easier for people from Boston with the launch of JetBlue's new nonstop Boston to Grenada service starting November 4. So that's according to the Grenada Tourism Authority. They announced that they're going to be having scheduled weekly flights on Saturdays. And there's also a current service uh, from the U.S. to Grenada, which is currently from New York. Interesting. So I thought Bermuda was special. Yeah. We just got our Boston JetBlue flight back. What else you got for us? All right, that's it for the news. And in the weather in Bermuda today, mostly cloudy conditions with a few showers, mainly around the afternoon. Should have a high near 26 degrees Celsius or 78 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And here in Jamaica, similar condition, mostly cloudy. We actually have a bit of rain and scattered showers will continue. All righty. Days of the year, Brett, what you got for us? All right, today is World Oceans Day. With oceans making up 66% of our Earth, it is crucial to we raise awareness about and tackle the threats facing these life-giving and life-containing bodies of water. And as we all can attest, we're so attached to the Atlantic Ocean. Let us take care of it. Yeah, folks, World Ocean Day. Why don't you come know. jump in the ocean? Yeah, come jump in the ocean. My contribution to the ocean is not getting in it, so there's one less person to, you know, you don't have to worry about my oils and my body being in there. Mar you want to be like the little mermaid? Yeah, I'm good. I don't even know what little mermaid is. Mar <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. All right, tomorrow, Mikhail, folks. Uh, don't, don't go anywhere. After this break, we've got the Dr. Jewel Lendy. We're talking about oral health. You know I love these conversations. Stick with us.
Let's face it, life can be a little <coughs> wild, but shopping doesn't have to be. I choose Peoples, so that whether it's a prescription that needs to be filled, a toy for my little terror, or a gift for a new addition to the family, um, we'll see about that. Everything's available in one convenient location. Some call it Peoples, I call it my one-stop shop in the city. Peoples, we're here for you. Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level. Celebrating her 70th birthday next month. Have you noticed her age is catching up with her? Yeah. Plus, she's having a hard time getting up and around like she's used to. I would sure hate to see her fall. At Medical House Limited, we can help make life situations easier. We have electric beds, motorized scooters, bath stools, walkers, you name it. Mom's been real good to us. We'll get her birthday and Christmas gifts from Medical House. Medical House has relocated next to the Dandy Town Field. Number 6, Bakery Lane, Pembroke. Telephone, 292-3622. Hey, welcome back to the big show. Larry Marshall, Jr., myself, Jamal Hartman. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Folks, please don't forget to subscribe on our website, www.thedailyhour.com, and follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow uh, beyond the mic as we continue to do our part to improve our community. Just want to answer a question. I think Michelle White had a question. Um, she said that my screen does uh, my screen for the show doesn't show up like the one on my phone. We'll have to try again. Does the browser make a difference? I believe it works in uh, Google Chrome. Explorer and uh, Mozilla. I don't believe it works in Safari. So um, you can try it in the other browsers and it may not work on your phone either, Michelle. So thank you for asking that. Um, folks, get your questions, comments ready. But without further ado, let's give a warm TDH welcome to our guests for the day. We've got Dr. Jewel Lendy. We are talking good oral health. Welcome to the show. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very wonderful, Jim Allen and Larry. Thank you for having me on the Daily Hour to discuss my most favorite subject. All right. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad it's your favorite subject. because It is. If we, can, we, we have a lot of conversations on the show about health and um, wellness. Mm -hmm. And we probably only ever had someone on in the 700-something episodes, three-plus years of the show, once. And, and we need to have you more because I tell you what, what we learned from other health professionals is how oral health impacts so many other things in our bodies. And I don't think people really realize this. But before we get into the conversation, just tell the audience a bit about yourself and your background. Okay. I am born in Bermuda, raised in Bermuda, attended the Barclay Institute. I attended Howard University um, for almost 10 years. I became a dental hygienist first. And then I moved on to become a dentist. Once I was in hygiene school, I really recognized that dentistry was really the area that captivated my brain. And so I moved on to that. And I graduated from dental school back in 1990. So it's been a little bit over 33 years that I've been a dentist. And throughout that time period, I have transitioned and transformed and been through all the different facets and areas of dentistry. And I actually left dentistry for a short period of time. And then I came back. Mm -hmm. um, and when I came back, I came back with a different perspective. And now my perspective is geared more towards what we're going to be talking about today, which is prevention. Indeed. Thank you. And that, that's a journey. And um, well, oh, yes. don't look a day over 21 and 33 years been in the game. Good that's go. right. Go. Oh, good genes. Good that's genes in the family. family. <laughs> Good oral health keeps you looking young too, but let, let's talk about like what yes, just yes. explain what why is good oral health so so important? First of all, Jamal, people don't really understand the connection between your oral cavity and your body. And I say it all the time, your oral cavity is the entrance way to your entire body and it affects so many things. The misconception that many people have is that they believe that the oral cavity and the oral health is just their teeth. 
And that is so far from the truth, from the truth. So now when we come into the office and we start talking about oral health, we do look at the teeth. We actuate the teeth. As important as the teeth are the gums. We have to look at the bone structure. And um, some people come in, they don't want to have x-rays. And then we do, when we do make the x-rays, we find out they may have spaces in the, in the um, bone structure that be, could be cancerous. Mm -hmm. uh, we also evaluate the palate. We evaluate the pharynx where they're um, where just beyond the tonsils, under the tongue, because we're looking for oral cancer. When you come into the, or the office, we evaluate your TMJ. We evaluate how you bite together, whether or not the way in which you bite is introducing any trauma. And so you see people's teeth chipping off. We look at the airway, because if you don't know, if you didn't have a good airway, that could cause you to clench and grind and brocks and then snore. So it's so much to oral health and people think it's just about teeth. Yes, and, and, and that leaves me, I mean, you're so correct. And you just went, said some things, obviously I didn't know, but you know, people really do believe that oral health is about having pretty looking teeth. Like you've got this great, great smile, you put it on social media. Some people just think it's about brushing every day, right? Yeah. Um, what are some methods to ensure good oral health? Okay, first of all, when we start talking about oral health, it's a team approach. We could do what we do in the office, but unless you're going to do what you do at home, it means nothing to us. And the first thing we try to do is make everybody responsible for their own health. You should be coming into us with questions. So you come to us, you have your questions, we do our exam, and, we, and then we give you some answers. The best thing you could do, first of all, I want to derail the myth that you should be coming every six months. And I heard one of you talk about it earlier this morning. Hmm. Do you, re do you realize that that six month was introduced by one of the toothpaste companies? Had nothing to do with dentistry. Interesting. It was one of the toothpaste companies that introduced, come to get your teeth done every six months. In the office, that's not how it's determined the period for which you should be having your teeth worked on, especially for cleanings. What's important is that you have an initial assessment by your dentist and you have your hygiene assessment. What they're going to do, they're going to determine the level of hygiene, because in our office we have levels of hygiene and everybody's put in a category. Based on the category that you're in, you might need to come in every month. Mm -hmm. Other people's hygiene is so good that they could go nine months. Some people could go a year. So there should be no, you need to come every six months. Mm -hmm. Everybody should be assessed. And then you, it is determined based on where you are in your life, the period of hygiene that you require. And that's how we do it. And that assessment would involve a clinical exam, which talks about, looks at um, the number of caries that you have. Are you prone to decay? It's going to talk about the gum disease because you're going to have, we're going to have a little instrument. We're going to go around your teeth and we're going to tell you, you know what? It's bleeding this many places and it's bleeding this often and it's not stopping. We're also going to tell you, you've, you've lost um, this amount of bone. Mm. And based on the conclusion of that exam, I start to say, look, your first cleaning is going to take more than one day. And you just tell them that right up front. It's going to take more than one cleaning. You're going to need to have a series of cleanings to get you stabilized. And then we let you go. If We say, we're going to bring you back in three months. If you show us, you could keep your teeth healthy to our standard. We'll let you go for four months. But if you show us that you can't, you're going to stay on three months until you can. Sometimes we say, you know what, your oral hygiene is so good, we'll check you in six months. That's the minimum that we're going to give you. Sometimes they come back and say, you know what, you have nothing. You could go nine months. So there's, it's a fallacy that you have to come every six months. No, what you need to do is go to your dentist, get assessed, and let them tell you the period for which you should be getting your teeth cleaned. Can I just well, say? That this is why we bring experts on the show because yep. I keep telling you all that I'm not one. But I just want to follow up on that because a lot of people say, and, and I, I, I I'm completely agree with you. Like we we buy into things because they've been the norm, right? We, yes. got, we don't ask ourselves how they became about being the norm. But I guess from an insurance perspective, like my, when I first moved to Florida, yes. I was actually going every four months because thankfully I still never had a cavity. Knock on wood. But yeah. when I they wanted to see me every four months because of the wisdom things back there. Yeah. And they wanted to monitor them um, 
So I was going to for months. The challenge, Dr. Lendy, was that the insurance would only cover every six months. Like, so what if what happens with insurance if insurance is not going to cover that? You, you know, or it would... depends. It depends on your approach to your health. Mm -hmm. If you say to yourself, "I'm only going to do what the insurance covers," mm -hmm. or you could say, "I would like to have good health." Now, some insurance companies in Bermuda at, the, at this time have recognized that prevention is important. Mm -hmm. So some of them no longer have a time frame. But they say every six months. Some of them now give you a cap. You could spend this amount of money for the year. Mm -hmm. And that gives the dentists and their clients, because the, the, the patients are not our clients for, as far as insurance is concerned. It's the, they have a contract with the insurance company. So it gives the patients the opportunity to say, okay, I have this bundle that I could use for the year together. Let's go figure out what would be the best for me. But if that's the case and you don't have that option, you have to decide what's important to me. Because yeah. people make people set their priorities. People will come to the office and say, I can't come every six months and give you $222. But that same person will get the nails done every two weeks. Mm. So where is your priority? And what I find is that not many people will make their oral health their priority. Yeah. It, it's quite interesting that you brought up these points because um, I, back in the day, high school, I had uh, braces for four years. And yes. I think I went every month to Dr. Tuzo to get sorted. And I often said, well, how come I don't go to the dentist as often? Like the, the braces individuals see me more often than, than the regular yeah. dentist. So it's quite interesting that you put that. Um, yeah. But what are the risks for those who don't go for regular checkups? What's the risk those people have? Okay, I'm going to start listing a whole bunch of risks, and I'm going to start with the oral cavity. Many times our teeth look beautiful and we're smiling, but because we have not had radiographs to show you what's going on on the inside of the teeth, the teeth could be bombed out with decay, and you would never know until it breaks off or you have... You have um, pain. So that's one of the risks. The second risk is gum disease. You might have no cavities, mm -hmm. but then you might have, because I heard you talking about earlier, that smelly breath, mm -hmm. that comes from bacteria and breakdown and or some type of trauma. So it's two things that could cause you to have that breakdown. You're either going to have bacteria and the bacteria will get in there and it would eat the, the, the byproducts of that bacteria will cause you to lose gum, will cause you to lose bone. Mm -hmm. And the minute you lose the bone, then you lose the gums and you start to see people's teeth getting longer. Mm -hmm. Unless you're coming in to get that taken care of, you're going to develop gum disease and that's going to eventually lose, lead to loose teeth and loss of teeth. Mm -hmm. Another issue that we have is that people don't recognize how all the oral cavity is linked to the entire body. They just don't get it yet. It's, it's linked to snoring. It's linked to breathing. It's linked to boxing. It's linked to cancer. It's linked to heart disease, diabetes. And not just that, when you walk into the office, we could tell many times by what your oral cavity looks like, what's happening in your body. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so how often should we generally be brushing and flossing? Again, I don't tell my clients what to do. We have a discussion and then we determine what is your diet? How, you know, um, what do you present with? So if I have a diet that's, I drink a lot of juices, then people don't recognize that juice has a lot of sugar and it could be as detrimental as eating candy. So you want to talk about brushing? Sometimes it's not always the brushing. Sometimes you might just need to rinse. Okay. So if you find yourself eating a lot of sweetie foods, then you would want to rinse after you eat the sweet, um, like drinks. You rinse after you drink the drink. But if you're going to be eating sweetie foods, it only takes five minutes for the acid to start, the acid attack. So you want to start brushing. So if you're a person who eats regular chewing gum on a regular basis, the one that's not sugar-free, you need to be brushing and swishing with water more to dilute the amount of acid that's going to be building up on your teeth. So a minimum of, a minimum of twice a day. 
and you want to do, and people get this, get this mixed up also. Many people get up first thing in the morning and I brush my teeth. Oh, I'm up and brush my teeth because you want to get rid of that smelly smell, that, that night breath that we talk about, okay? Mm -hmm. But then you eat your breakfast and that food stays there for the entire day. Yep. You don't want to do that. If you're going to brush your teeth when you get up because you want to be pleasant to the people around you, but then after that, though, you're going to eat your breakfast and brush your teeth. If not, you're going to go, food's going to be stuck in your mouth from breakfast, lunch, and then dinner. And then you're going to brush your teeth 10 o'clock at night. It only takes a few minutes for the bacteria that's living in our mouth to eat that food and produce a byproduct of acid. Mm -hmm. So you got to be conscious. Most people who's in the field will brush more than people who's not. But if you have a consciousness about what you're eating, then you begin to say, you know what? I'm eating a lot of sugar, potato chips stuff that gets stuck between your teeth, I need to either floss and or brush because if not, the bacteria that lives in our mouth will begin to eat that same food and give you breakdown. Okay. All right, shifting gears real fast. The, you have a question, Jamal? You want to get in on this? No, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, people get the wisdom teeth taken out at all different ages, some never at all. I think it's one of the biggest things we don't know of. Can you explain why this happens? Okay. Like everything in the world, everybody has the own philosophy towards wisdom teeth. And so I could only speak about what we do in our office. We don't touch anything unless it's going to cause problems. So, and then in our office, we do orthodontics and the importance of maintaining a wisdom tooth when you're having tooth movement and the development of the oral cavity and the shape of the mouth is so important. Now, if you come in and we make the x-ray that goes around your head, there's two different types. You can either have one that's called a panorax or a three-dimensional one. And if we see that the wisdom teeth is going to have a negative impact on the development of the other teeth, and by that I mean it may cause that tooth to develop a cavity, then we would say, you know what, this is going to be detrimental long term let's go take it out but sometimes if you're 30 years old and that tooth has been lying flat like this here and it's way down at the base of the of the um root of the adjacent teeth you're 30 you're fully developed it's not going to have any impact on your oral health long term we leave it mm -hmm. so sometimes the teeth are in the mouth and the half in and half out they can cause decay, they can cause infection, and if we find that it's becoming a negative effect, we take it out. But to just say we take out all wisdom teeth, that I don't think people do that anymore, and it's 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 not as common as it used to be. Okay. So, yeah, so again, it should be monitored and assessed individually to determine the effect it's going to have on you as an individual. It should not be across the board, we take out all wisdom teeth. All righty. Folks, if you have any questions or comments for Dr. Landy, please send them through. We'll try to get through as many as possible. Manuela John, she's asking, uh, there was a discussion recently about whether or not one should rinse the toothpaste out after brushing. Is that an issue? Um, to rinse the toothpaste, it depends on your philosophy. Most people have toothpaste. Uh, it depends on why you're using the toothpaste also, because a lot of people use natural toothpaste and the ingredients and hands what's going on some ingredients have um salt in them like if you have if you have sensitivity you have salts in your toothpaste and what those salts do is they go into the nerve endings and they seal them and it decreases the sensitivity so if you're going to rinse that out, you're almost defeating the purpose of using those toothpastes. And one of them is called Sensodyne. So no, when you brush your teeth, you don't want to rinse it out. Split it out and let it go because that's, it needs to have a long-term effect. Other people use toothpaste that have fluoride in it. Um, and you want that fluoride to have the effect on the teeth. What I would say is because you don't want too much fluoride to build up in the body, I would spit as much out as possible and then go about your business. Mm. Got you. Yes. Um, we've got um, Diane Elliott. She's asking, uh, should you wet your toothbrush before brushing? I'm not quite sure what the difference would be. Um, I rinse my toothbrush, and this is just my own personal habit. Mm -hmm. I rinse it because I know it's out there creeping and crawling around. 
<laughs> and I, I, I just, I'm, I'm, that's just who I am. So I rinse my toothbrush. But as far as it having an impact or non-impact on the actual brushing of your teeth, I don't think it's going to make any difference because the minute you put that toothbrush in your mouth, it's going to get wet by your saliva. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure how it would affect, but for me, it has no impact. I just don't like. I just want to be sure that everything's clean on it. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, Charles H. Jeffs II um, asking, what's a good way to broach the subject about someone's oral health? They might be a family, friend, or a co-worker. Um, I'm going to try to be diplomatic because when you walk into the office, I sit there very nicely and I say, Mr. Hartman, do you realize that as I'm speaking to you, I smell your breath? Mm. And, um, that's, and I could do that because I'm a dentist. Now, for the lay person, you have to decide diplomatically, first of all, where to say it, mm -hmm. the turn of voice you're going to use to say it, and why you find it's necessary to say it. So let's go there. Where to say it. You're going to pull that person to the side, and you're going to say, um, Mr. Jamal, um, I, I've, you've been in our company for the last three years. And here recently, we've noticed a change in your health. And we find that um, we would like to make a suggestion. And we'd like for you to go and visit your dentist because it, the change in your health, and tell them what the change is, we've noticed that your breath is becoming offensive. Mm -hmm. And we would like for you to go to visit the dentist. Or we would recommend or suggest mm -hmm. that you go have a dental visit because um, it's going to have an impact on how people receive you. Mm -hmm. And we want you to show up as your best self. Mm -hmm. You always put it on. We want you to be your best self. Because guess what? After that person goes to the dentist, and if they get a clean bill of health, they have to start looking at other things because bare breath does not come from just your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, it could come from your stomach. It could come from your tonsils. It could come from the food that you eat. You might just need to brush your tongue. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and that's that's what I think. When you said at the beginning, this this is conversations about prevention. It's yeah. about taking steps at, because what I really want to drive home to people, right, is I get my X-rays when I go in. I mm -hmm. can't stand putting that thing in my mouth. Like that, I, it just has made my experience as an adult less fun than when I was a, ch I was a child. So every yeah. time I go, I do ask for a little goodie bag because I don't like going, but I go and I yes. say it's prevention because I'm not quite sure that we've ever taken mental health or oral health as we've taken physical health. And I think this is just as important. I just want to go to Maya, Media Maya asked a question. How yes. many times, because you mentioned your tongue, yes. how many times a day should uh, you use a tongue scrubber? Oh, I, um, I do it once a day. Um, and that's because I like garlic. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy onions and I like eating this stuff raw. Okay. <laughs> And so I know myself, and I don't want to be offensive. And that stuff, see, when you look, so you stick out your tongue like this, you have little hairs on your tongue, okay? Mm -hmm. And when you eat that food, that food, because so imagine having little piles of, like this here, like a carpet, because mm -hmm. that's what your tongue is, like a carpet with the hairs on it. And so the food that we eat goes down. So you know how you use a vacuum to vacuum all the sand on your carpet? Mm -hmm. That tongue scraper does the same thing to your tongue. So all the little bacteria and the little food particles that could get trapped on there, I do it once a day and I scrape, I scrape and I scrape. And I just put, put it right over the sink and you pull it forward and everything just drops right again. So Maya, I do it once a day. All right. Cool. Very nice. Very, very good information. Yes. He's asking, are there any remedies or tips for those with dark colored gums? Be blessed. That's it. I am, we are of the black community. It is our race and the darkness of our gums comes from our, gums comes from our melanin. Mm -hmm. Like I am dark complexion. Some people are light. Some people who have in their gums, they're going to see a darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have dark pigments. It's just who we are. And it's something that we can't change. It's a part of our DNA structure. Okay. Okay. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. Anthony Pete is asking, how often would you say toothbrush should be changed? Um, you're, and also asking for your advice on electric toothbrushes. 
okay, um, when your bristles begin to go like this, because <laughs> mm. when you have your toothbrush, they're lined up in a certain way. The rows are lined up. Some of them are longer, some of them are short. As we use the toothbrush, the forces of us using it over time causes the stuff to splay. Mm. And when they splay, because the object of the tooth, the objective of the toothbrush is to get up underneath the gums. Okay, mm. so they have to be in a certain direction like this. So that when you put them up between the gums and the tooth, they actually go there. So once your toothbrush gets all old and you look at it and you see them turning over like a curl, it's time to go. That could be three months. That could be four months. After six months, you would want to change it anyway because I don't think you could get all the bacteria and stuff out of it. So chalk it and get another one. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm with you. I if My max is six months, but if it's going after like two or three months, then I'm changing. Uh, before you go, I just want to ask another question. What, what advice would you, there are a lot of people who just don't like going to the dentist. They don't like, you know, the feeling of someone in the mouth, but what advice would you give someone who simply just doesn't like it? Like how can we encourage people to make an appointment? You know what? We build our practice on people who don't like going to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you ha we have to do is um, allow people, meet people where they are when they walk through the door. So if the person knows that they don't like to come, if they know that they have, because most of you, when they don't like to come, it's because of an underlying reason, okay? Because most people just say, I don't want to go to the dentist. That's not common. Most people have an underlying reason that has caused them to have some type of fear. Mm -hmm. And that fear prevents them from coming. When you know that when you walk into the dental office, we're not going to judge you for where you are. Mm -hmm. If you're nervous, we're going to work with you. And dentists approach it like that. We don't get upset with you. If you're nervous, just if you could get the courage to just show up, we as dentists will meet you where you are. If it takes us a little bit extra time, guess what? We might tell you, you know what? Because of your nerves, we're going to assist you with this. You might need to have a sedative. We might need to do a little bit at a time. We might need to explain things more to you or show you nothing. But you have to know that we need you to get the courage because if you don't, you're going to have so many other effects because the oral health is so important that it's going to have a detrimental effect on your entire body. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we could do is encourage you to just show up mm -hmm. and just be honest and just tell us, I don't want to be here. I'm terrified. Or I don't have the money. Would you work with me to get the best thing I could have with what I have, the finances I have? We will listen to you. And it's our responsibility as dentists to meet you where you are mm -hmm. so that we can work with you and move you from where you are to a place of good health. Thank you so much, Dr. Landy. This has been a refreshing conversation. Um, I'm going to talk to our producers having you back on very soon uh, because there's so much more to discuss. So thank you yeah. so much for making time yes. for us today. Uh, please let us know if there's anything going on, anything coming up that we can um, connect with our audience, communicate with our audience. Please just reach out. Have a wonderful day. Thanks again. And thank you for having me on the Daily Hour. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Dr. Okay. Jewel Landy, folks, if you appreciate the conversation, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. I learned so much. I mean, yeah. I, look, folks, I'm very honest. We're not the experts. That's why we bring people on to have conversations. I am grateful for them. Even when they come on, you remember Mr. Griffith, Billy, Billy, um, Billy William Griffith. He corrected me about some things in tourism. What I was speaking from was my experience. The norm for Larry and myself was to go every six months. However, yeah. when, I'm glad she said it because when I moved to Florida, I was going every four to monitor, like I said. But when you have experts, they give the meanings that they give you understanding yeah. of why something exists and what doesn't. But let's take a quick break. We'll come back again. If you appreciated the conversation, give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Share it with your family and friends. The reason I say, sh especially share this conversation, because a lot of what she discussed and said could save somebody's life. It really can. We'll be right back after this. Hi, welcome to ER Fisheries. I'm Jalen Steed, store manager and trained chef, and I'm here to help you with all of your food needs. Let's talk about why you should come and check out ER Fisheries. We offer the widest range of specialty meats and seafood items. At a price point that will absolutely fit your budget. As a chef, 
I'm able to answer all of your food questions, help you come up with meal ideas, and generally guide you in the right direction. You'll get a custom shopping experience unlike any other food store in Bermuda, where we'll cater to your needs and provide you with excellent customer service. Where else can you get quality cooking advice and quality products? I look forward to helping you with all your meal ideas. Alrighty, welcome back. Thanks again to Dr. Jewel Landy. What a conversation, folks. If you appreciated that conversation, please, again, give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Please share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues, WhatsApp groups, whatever. These conversations are the community conversations we hope that will create a healthier people among us. All right? We, we, we won't be dealing with those bad breath people. We won't yeah. do prevention measures. I, I'm glad that somebody asked, what do we tell those people? Because we all got them. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again to the BAC group of companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring we're able to have these conversations with you on a daily basis. Folks, it's time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. Right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, it's a name that plays today, folks. It's two answers, but we'll accept one. Here we go. Name one of the two U.S. cities that's known as the Magic City. Orlando. Hey, got me, L.A. Hey, Andrews, L.A. Sacramento. You got me. I think people think Orlando because of Disney and the Orlando Magic, but you know, um, the original um, Magic City, Magic City of the South, was uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Vegas is Sin City, not the Magic City. Sin City. Thank you, Stacy Brown. Miami is known as the Magic City. Okay. New York is known as the Big Apple. Cool. But yeah, Vegas is Sin City, folks. Not Vegas. Think yeah. about Atlanta, but okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. We'll just leave it at that. It's PG. It's still early, but uh, let's wrap it up. Let's 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 um. Final thoughts on this morning's discussion about the criteria for national heroes, and then obviously the um conversation with Dr. Jewel Andy. Yeah, I, I I would like with the national heroes criteria. I just like to see it become um, apolitical, and not to say that political figures can't be included, but it just seems that's that way, that's the way we're going. And if you even look at it, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it depends on what part is in power, you see their former political member. So, you know, why can't we get uh, individuals that are, had great strides in dentistry, as we saw today, you know what I mean? Like, it it's definitely has to be more individuals at it. Um, sometimes we have conversations and, and I don't know how they necessarily will go but I'm often wild and today was an episode where I was wild. We had a vast amount of helpful information by Dr. Lendy and I'm grateful for what the work that she's doing and it, it, it just continues to show us that education has to be a part of our almost everyday life because we can learn something from so many different individuals and um I appreciate that she wasn't stuck to the general norms of the six months, change your toothbrush every three months, you know, let's do things as needed. And that's something that I really took away from it. Yeah. Um, as far as the national heroes criteria, um, I, I agree with Larry. I think it should reflect people. Um, as someone said on the Instagram uh, response story, um, that has done something that transcends generations. Um, people, there are a lot of people who have done things that are not in politics or politically related. I'd like to see some people recognized who were um, effective in creating change for entrepreneurs, for the disenfranchised, right? Um, so while I appreciate the criteria that they have, um, I would love it to be some consideration of people in other categories are far away from politics. As far as Dr. Jewel Landy, again, what I like most about her today, she didn't come and try to sell us anything. She came 
and educated us. Yeah. And I think these are the kind of conversations that really, really make this show worth doing to me. We all thought we knew we should go every six months or change when to change our toothbrush or that dental or oral health is just about having good looking teeth. There's so much more. And I really, really do hope, give her a call. If you don't have a dentist, give her a call. She'll meet you where you are, she said. It's no judgment. Or if you're not near where you can give her a call and go see her, go on Google, find a dentist in your area. Biggest takeaway from me was just go and get checked. You mm -hmm. know, it could save your life. Thanks again to Dr. Jewel Andy. You've got some daily inspiration for us, Bert? I do. And today's daily inspiration is brought to us by the you know, Fisheries, and it's from former NFL quarterback Terry Bradshaw. When you've got something to prove, there's nothing greater than a challenge. I like that. Nothing greater than a challenge, folks. Folks, please don't forget to subscribe on our website. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Thanks again to our partners, the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. As always, we appreciate you, we love you, and we thank you for making us part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we'll be back to do this again with you tomorrow. He's Larry Marshall Jr. I'm Jamal Hartman. Please do make it a safe and a great day. Where is out? Peace.